A little over a week ago, I uploaded a video about mock rides and their rise to becoming one of the best roller coaster manufacturers out there. They had kind of been going under the radar through the 2010s, but really made a name for themselves by unveiling the first extreme spinning coaster with Time Traveler in 2018. This was a huge success and led people to speculate where the next one of these rides would go and what it would look like. But I don't think anyone expected the next one to go to a small park in Belgium geared towards kids, and I doubt anyone predicted that it would be as good as it ended up being. Ride to Happiness opened at Plop's Land of Pan in July of 2021 and was immediately bombarded with fantastic reviews. I had plans to make it out there in the spring of 2023 and was looking forward to getting on a coaster that many people called the best in Europe. But, fearing that it wouldn't live up to any unreasonable expectations, I wasn't really hyping Ride to Happiness up too much before I went to ride it. Okay, maybe a little bit, but let me tell you, Ride to Happiness absolutely deserved any and all hype I had for it. This is such a unique experience that is completely different from any other coaster I've been on. I mentioned how Time Traveler is the same model as Ride to Happiness, but having ridden both, I can easily say that Ride to Happiness is a completely different beast. But what makes this coaster so fantastic? Why does everyone who's been on it seem to give it near unanimous praise? Well, if you have ridden it, you most likely already know why. But the answer is hard to explain. I've put off making this video for quite a while now due to the fact that I simply did not know how to describe this experience. But now, having taken some time to think about it, I can now summarize my opinions and it's apparent just how good this coaster truly is. Ride to Happiness is simply unbelievable. So unbelievable that, even though I haven't been on every ride out there, I truly believe that it could just be the best coaster in the world. Just from looking at the stats, Ride to Happiness doesn't seem all that impressive. It's 106 feet or 36 meters tall, reaches 56 miles per hour or 90 kilometers per hour, and is decently short too at just over 3,000 feet or 920 meters long. It's got six inversions though, and of course the thing that makes it truly stand out from other coasters is that spinning aspect. I've heard a lot of people attribute Ride to Happiness's greatness solely to the spinning, but I don't think that's true. It's hard to know for sure, but I think the layout and forces are good enough on their own to allow for an elite ride even if it weren't spinning. That's all speculation though, and the reality is that this coaster is as good as it is because the trains work in tandem with the layout to give riders the craziest, most intense experience imaginable. Ride to Happiness is, simply put, the most insane ride out there. More than any other coaster on Ride to Happiness, it feels like you're completely at the mercy of this beast of a ride. You're powerless, being flung up and down and upside down, laughing and screaming the whole time. I've been on some of the so-called scariest roller coasters in the world, but none of them come even close to feeling like this. It's psychotic and demented, and I'm all for that. But obviously because of that, Ride to Happiness will not be for everybody. I can assure you it's perfectly safe and has no problem with forces that can be excessive to the human body or anything, but I could definitely see people not liking it because it's too much for them. I rode Ride to Happiness 19 times during the 5 hours it was open, and there were absolutely moments when I would have to take a break. I'd say this coaster is definitely re-rideable due to the fact that you get a unique experience every time, but it's not marathonable, if you get what I mean. Despite that though, I'm a sucker for crazy intense rides and thrills at the highest level, and Ride to Happiness does that better than anything else I've ridden, which is why, as of now, it's easily my favorite coaster I've been on. But let's backtrack. Let's go back to before March 3rd, 2023. Before I went on this ride, I was still singing the praises of Taiga, firmly stuck in my belief that it was the best coaster in Europe, bar none. Despite the hype surrounding Ride to Happiness, I tried to keep my expectations in check before my visit, fearing what would happen if I anticipated perfection and didn't get it. But one key thing that's important to keep in mind is that expectations and excitement are two very different things. So while I refrain from expecting too much, I was excited as fuck. On the day I visited Plop's Land, Ride to Happiness didn't open until 12.30 due to staggered openings, two hours after the park and a lot of other rides there had opened. This was good in a way because it allowed me to explore Plop's Land and do some other rides there without having to worry about making sure to ride Ride to Happiness over and over again. When it was time for it to open though, you can bet I was one of the first in line. And before I was even on the ride, or in the queue for that matter, I was completely immersed in this world that Plops Land had built up for Ride to Happiness. It's unlike any other coaster theme out there. Ride to Happiness has its own dedicated plaza. There's futuristic music playing, great theming, the tracks coming from every direction, but what really makes this area special is the overall sensation of it. Ride to Happiness is themed to the music festival Tomorrowland, which might seem like a weird theme for a coaster, but it absolutely works. I don't know too much about this festival, but it seems as if the effect it had on the theming and presentation of this coaster is 100% positive. 
Much like a lot of things with this ride, it's hard to put into words, but I'd say the general vibe is otherworldly. With it being themed after a music festival, it's only natural that the area would have an amazing musical theme. The score is spellbinding and really reinforces that magical, larger-than-life feeling. Being in the Ride to Happiness Plaza made me feel like I was almost disconnected from reality in a way. I can't commend Plopsland enough for backing up the best coaster in Europe with a fantastic theme and surrounding with all the pieces to make it not just a ride, but an experience in the greatest sense of the word. This sense of wonder continues throughout the queue. It reinforces what was shown in the plaza, doubling down on the feelings, sights, and sounds. With Ride to Happiness being located at a family park, I never experienced a wait longer than 20 minutes, and I've heard the same thing from other people. It leads me to question if this coaster truly was the right fit for Plop's Land due to the park's intended audience, but it leads to shorter lines, so I'm not complaining. When you get up to the station, it's an absolute spectacle. I probably sound like a broken record by now, but everything about Ride to Happiness, especially here, feels so majestic and awe-inspiring. The station looks fantastic, very open with windows and wood and gears everywhere. Unrelated, but I find it funny that both Mach Extreme Spinners have gears as such a huge part in their theming. It's a really specific thing to have. One thing Time Traveler doesn't have, though, is a talking robot woman on the wall. She says a bunch of philosophical sounding stuff that adds to the futuristic feeling of the station and area as a whole. Overall, the entire ambiance of Ride to Happiness from the plaza to the queue to the station is incredible and among the best of any coaster. It's not a blatant theme, exactly, or a story it's trying to tell, it's just a feeling and one that could mean any number of things to any number of people. I just appreciate how well this was all done, the landscaping, the particularities in theme design, and the music. I've heard people gloss over the theming of this ride because the layout might overshadow it, but this incredible theme is one of the many things that makes Ride to Happiness what it is, and I absolutely love it. Moving on to the trains, they're very similar to the ones found on Time Traveler, both in design and the fact that they look the exact same. There's four cars with four people in a car. Something important to keep in mind is that due to the spinning aspect, it doesn't matter what row you sit in, it just matters which car. The seats are the typical Mach ones, very comfortable and accommodating. The lap bars are pretty bulky, but don't come down during the ride due to the restraint checking process. How that works, and it's the same on Time Traveler, is that a ride-up will come over and press a button that automatically lowers all the restraints in a car. It'll come down as far as it can, so if you shimmy up a bit in your seat, you can avoid getting stapled. Before the tightening stops, there'll be one more quick push down, but after that the restraint won't come down anymore and you'll have plenty of room, if you want it. After the train dispatches, you roll out of the station and immediately enter a Jojo roll, which gives some unbelievable hang time. The same element can be found on other coasters, but I like this one best due to the spinning. Because of that, it's unlikely that you'll be facing forwards, and you'll actually end up doing the roller coaster version of a front flip or back flip. Of course, the 5 seconds of hang time is compounded by the fact that Ride to Happiness has those lap bars, which really makes you feel like you're going to fall out, especially if you're not stapled. Overall, this is an incredible element, delivering some of the best sustained hang time I've felt, and it's a fantastic start to the ride. After the Jojo roll, the train comes to a stop on the launch track. Now's a good time to mention that the music from the plaza, queue, and station doesn't stop there. Ride to Happiness has onboard audio that syncs up with a lot of the coaster's elements, and it does so much to enhance the ride. Once again, it reinforces the ride's theme, and even though you're on the coaster, the feeling from the previous parts of the experience is still there with you. The onboard audio was actually done by Hans Zimmer, so naturally, it's very good. The music builds up when you're on the launch track, continuing as the train accelerates forward. The initial kick is sudden and punchy, unlike a lot of other mock launches. This one actually has a good bit of power to it, and is made even better by the fact that the train starts spinning rapidly halfway down the track. After the launch, you rise up into this top hat-esque element. It's not traditional because of this flat section at the top, but in my opinion that makes it much better. The pull up into it is a quick burst of strong positives, followed by unbelievable ejector airtime in the front car. One of my main gripes with Time Traveler is that it's only really good in the back car. The drop out of the station is incredible back there, but doesn't do too much in the front few cars. Ride to Happiness's top hat draws a lot of comparisons to Time Traveler's drop out of the station. They're both incredible drops, giving stellar ejector airtime in the back car. But where Ride to Happiness does it better is that the pop up into the top hat in the front car gives stronger airtime than the drop off in the back car. When I used the Ride Forces app to measure the G's on Ride to Happiness, that ejector pop up into the top hat averaged negative 1.8, and I've seen it go as extreme as negative 2.1 on other people's recordings. Even though it's just a quick pop and nowhere near as sustained as the drop off of it or Time Traveler's drop, this is an unbelievably powerful moment of ejector airtime, made even more powerful because you'll most likely take it at some sort of angle. 
the flat section separating the ascent and descent banks you slightly outwards, and then you plummet down that incredible drop. I just touched on it, but this drop gives incredible sustained ejector in the back car, and it's even better when you're backwards or sideways. The following valley offers very strong positives. One of the main criticisms I've heard for Ride to Happiness is that it operates on an element-to-element -element basis with nothing in between, delivering great elements but also many dead spots. And while I could definitely see where these people are coming from, I disagree because the space in between the elements always offers a good bit of positive forces, seen in this valley as well as many of the others. Next is the banana roll. This is a very unique inversion, made even more so due to the fact that you're spinning. I wouldn't say it's incredibly whippy or has unbelievable hang time, it's just super disorienting because the track kind of weaves up and down and the train spins along with it. After another powerful valley, you go through a vertical loop, which has the same sort of disorientation sensation as the banana roll. Loops are fun facing forward or backward, but they're even better when you spin throughout the entire element or take it sideways. This loop, as well as the next two maneuvers, are elements very similar to those found on Time Traveler, the first extreme spinner but I think the difference in the spinning between that ride and this one is most apparent here. I noted in my Time Traveler review that those trains don't feel like they're spinning, rather rotating, so you experience different elements in different ways, and I still stand by that. Ride to Happiness' spin, though, is much faster and more noticeable. It's by no means like a crazy flat ride, but it's definitely enough to make someone with motion sickness or sensitivity to spinning very nauseous. After the loop, you go through a step-up underflip, which is basically a 270 degree zero G roll, followed by a turn. I have no idea why that needs to have its own name, but thuzi has got a thuzi, I guess. This element is definitely the best of the three inversions in the first half after the top hat due to its whippiness and how the spinning interacts with the element. It's kind of the same situation as the Jojo roll where you feel like you're either doing a front flip or back flip depending on which way you're facing. The difference between this and the Jojo roll is the speed at which you go through the elements. Obviously here it's whippier, but I prefer the Jojo roll due to the sustained hang time. The section between this roll and the second launch is undoubtedly the weakest part of the ride. The turn offers a little bit of positives, but that twisted airtime hill and following curve downwards just doesn't do much at all. I much prefer the similar maneuver on Time Traveler, which gives great airtime, whip, and positives all within the span of a few seconds. Here the element's pretty drawn out and has little to no bite. But despite its mildness, I view it as a sort of break in the action before you get to the second half. And believe me, this second half is so wild, you absolutely need a little break before it. Much like Time Traveler, the second half begins with a rolling launch. You're already traveling at a decent speed, so this launch doesn't accelerate too much. The reason why it's great though is because of this airtime hill in the middle. This has become popular on swing launch coasters like Tutatis and Pantheon, as well as on other rides like Hopper at Strike, and it's a welcome addition here. While accelerating, you're hit with a burst of ejector airtime, stronger the further you are back in the train. The launch itself isn't great, it can't be because you don't accelerate that much at all, but the element as a whole is great because of the airtime it provides. After the second launch, you head into what's called a double inverting dive loop. It's very similar to the Flying Snake Dive on Stormrunner, but this one inverts you on the way up and then again on the way down, whereas Stormrunner's first inversion takes place when you've already leveled out. It's a minor difference, and obviously the biggest difference between this one and the one on Stormrunner is that you're spinning the whole time. This set of inversions is fantastic and encapsulates the feeling of pure chaos that's prevalent throughout the entire layout. The inversions themselves are super whippy, and no matter which way you take them, it'll be a completely disorienting experience. This element isn't taken quite as fast as it could have been, there's a notable pause at the top, but it doesn't really matter because you're pulled through each of the two inversions. Like I said, this element is absolutely crazy, and it's one of the best on the ride. Following that, you hit another intense valley and rise up into this camelback that twists out at the end. The hill delivers fantastic ejector airtime, and then you're immediately whipped to the left while you're still out of your seat. It's an incredible moment of laterals, and when combined with strong ejector, it makes for another amazing element. You then navigate another intense valley whose positives continue through an overbanked turn. This is a really sustained moment of intensity and caused me to gray out almost every single time. Ride to Happiness isn't as focused on positives as other coasters like Taiga or Karnan, but still contains some intense moments in the valleys as well as during this turn. The final maneuver of this ride is a double up. This element consists of two extremely strong moments of ejector, some of the best on the entire coaster. Despite it being a spinning coaster, Ride to Happiness delivers some of the most powerful airtime I've felt on anything. After 19 rides, my thighs were completely bruised and this double up was one of the main reasons why. It's an incredible way to end an incredible coaster and leave you sitting on the brake run absolutely floored. So obviously I'm a big fan of this ride, I hope that's been apparent from the 15 minutes I've rambled on and on about it. But like I said, this ride isn't for everyone, especially with those with motion sickness or people who get dizzy easily. And while Ride to Happiness has been praised by almost everyone, like anything, it's not without its faults. 
So instead of hearing me continue to talk about this coaster, here's a special guest to give some of his thoughts on the matter. He's known by many names, such as Roller Coaster Stuff, OK544, but let's just call him Ass. Take it away. Ride to Happiness is a fantastic ride. When Coaster Critic asked me to do a segment, I was more than happy to talk about this coaster. The reason Ride to Happiness works so well is because of the perfect storm of elements. The launch is unlike many mock launches in that it has force and isn't shitty. The inversions combined with the spinning are completely disorienting, and spinning airtime is as crazy as it sounds. Speaking of the spinning, it's unlike any other coaster I've ridden, much different from its counterpart in Silver Dollar City, but the spinning does contribute to my main gripe with this coaster. That being the spinning is too much for me. I'm a rather tall person, and the lap bar wasn't enough to keep me upright at some points in the ride. Now, to some of you freaks, that may sound enjoyable, but when it's throwing you around, it can be a little painful. Now, to some of you masochists, that may sound enjoyable, but when you're just trying to enjoy a great ride over and over, it starts to get to you. Now, I still have this ride ranked extremely high, and of the six people I was with, four said it was their favorite coaster. After Energylandia, that changed to two, but that's besides the point. Now, if some of you in the comments want to argue with me on any of these points, shut up. At least I've ridden the ride I'm talking about before. I'm saying this I've never ridden an RMC, but anyway. I've also received lots of comments from you guys on previous videos with your thoughts on Ride to Happiness, including a few people saying it's not that good, the spinning's too much, or on the other hand, it's not as insane as people say it is. I can definitely see where these people are coming from, but for me personally, Ride to Happiness is the perfect level of craziness. It blows me away and leaves me breathless, but not so much so that I wouldn't consider riding it again. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of flat rides that spin you around endlessly, but Ride to Happiness strikes the perfect balance of being both a coaster with an actual layout and a disorienting, out of control experience. But as I mentioned in the layout breakdown, Ride to Happiness does have a few moments that I think could have been executed better, most notably that section before the second launch. My second favorite coaster is Taiga, and I made a video a while back on why I believe that to be a perfect roller coaster. And even though I now prefer Ride to Happiness, I still find Taiga to be objectively flawless from a layout standpoint, something that can't completely be said about Ride to Happiness. But I'm willing to excuse that because Ride to Happiness delivers pure, unfiltered insanity. I haven't personally felt that on any coaster ever, and it's something that I don't think even exists on any coaster in the world aside from maybe the full-scale 4D coasters. Of course, I haven't been on any of the 4D coasters or any of the smaller 4D free spins for that matter, so I have absolutely no right to stack Ride to Happiness up against those coasters, and I won't. Those full scale 4D coasters look incredible with the same kind of out of control feeling as Ride to Happiness, and they're at the top of my bucket list. But aside from possibly those, I honestly can't see any coaster in the world beating out Ride to Happiness. Even the best rides I've been on, like Velocicoaster, Zadra, and Iron Gwazi, don't come close to comparing because of the difference in overall intensity. And when I talk about intensity, I'm not just using that word to mean positive g-force. I'm talking about the overall nature of the ride, from the positives to the airtime to the disorientation. And the reason why Ride to Happiness is that intense is because of the spinning. As good as other coasters may be, the spinning element on Ride to Happiness elevates it far above its elite counterparts, at least in my eyes. The fact of the matter is that those other coasters almost can't even stack up to this one because of that. Ass touched on this, but it's such a different sensation to be spinning while going through these strong airtime moments, world-class inversions, and all sorts of other elements this monster of a ride has cooked up. It is unlike anything else out there. That's why, if you haven't ridden it, I wholeheartedly believe that Ride to Happiness should be at the top of your bucket list. You know what? This is such a one-of-a-kind experience that it should be your entire bucket list. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, this ride is not for everyone, but it's absolutely a ride every coaster enthusiast should do their best to get on. Now, everything I'm saying might seem confusing if you're thinking about Time Traveler. After all, it's the same model, so it's gotta offer a similar ride experience, right? Only partly. While the general idea is the same and they have many similar elements, the forces in spinning are so much more accentuated on Ride to Happiness. The difference between Time Traveler and Ride to Happiness is like the difference between Time Traveler and Dwarval Wind. It may sound like I'm joking, or maybe that I'm not a fan of Time Traveler, but don't get me wrong, Time Traveler is fantastic, it's just that Ride to Happiness is on a whole nother level. Which leads me to question, if the jump from Time Traveler to this was this drastic, what on earth will the next extreme spinner look like? Ride to Happiness is only the second installation of this model, so it's reasonable to assume the model will only advance from here. Whether that means Mach pursues the avenue of creating insane coasters that are among the world's best, or takes a step back and caters this model to be accessible to a greater audience remains to be seen, but I sure hope it's the former. Like I talked about in the last video, Mach is evolving into one of the best manufacturers, and this model is one of the main reasons why. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Ride to Happiness isn't incredible because it's a stepping stone for Mach rides and their journey as a company, or because it might be the catalyst that ushers in a new wave of coaster designs. 
it's incredible simply because of what it is. It is a phenomenal roller coaster, and I could just leave it at that without talking about its overall implications. And I think that's something that myself and a lot of other coaster enthusiasts seem to overlook, choosing to focus on how a certain ride affects the industry instead of simply appreciating it for what it is. Let me tell you something. I've ridden a ton of roller coasters, and because of that, a lot of them start to blend together after some time. They're obviously not becoming stale or anything, but I find myself having a different viewpoint on coasters in general because of my experience and overall knowledge regarding them. It's a wonderful viewpoint to have, one that allows me to communicate with others similar to me in this regard, and one that's opened my eyes to many, many things. But there's a downside to being a coaster enthusiast. While the ride to happinesses, steel vengeances, and iron guazis of the world fill us with wonder and awe, the demonins, ripride rockets, and wild eagles are often left behind. We look at the latter type of ride not as machines made for enjoyment, rather choosing to critique them and form opinions on coasters that are made solely for the people riding them to have fun. Here's what I mean. The other day I was at SeaWorld Orlando and I rode Manta. Now Manta is an awesome ride and I love it for its positive forces, unique flying sensation, and inversions. During my second ride on Manta, I sat next to these two British kids who were absolutely terrified. They nervously talked to each other in the queue, freaked out on the lift hill, and screamed their lungs out on the ride itself, saying how awesome it was afterwards and how they wanted to go again. Sitting with them reminded me of a time before I became an enthusiast, a time when I was just like them. I knew how they were feeling because I had felt that way many years ago, and I'm sure lots of you have too. Now that I am a coaster enthusiast, I don't get that feeling of simultaneous fear, anticipation, and anxiousness anymore like the kids on Manta, and I can't go back to that. But that's okay. I love my outlook on coasters. I love knowing all about them, I love sharing that with others who feel the same way, and I love the feeling of payoff when I finally see and experience a ride that I've heard about for so long. I love both the certainty and uncertainty of being an enthusiast, knowing in a way what a coaster will be like before I get on it, yet having that vacillating surety almost add to the intrigue of the experience. I love making these videos, I love sharing my opinions, and overall it's absolutely safe to say that I love being an enthusiast. But because of that, the individual rides I have on some coasters aren't as good due to my grasp on the industry as a whole. My experience on something like Manta, while great, just wasn't like the experience of those British kids, and it never will be. And even though I said that's fine, the truth is I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss that feeling just a little bit. Which is where something like Ride to Happiness comes in. It's so much crazier than any other coaster, giving me the same sensation that Manta gave the British kids. It combines the joy of being an enthusiast with the joy of childlike coaster wonder, and does that in the best way possible. It's a machine unlike any other, able to draw such a wide variety of emotions from me and others who've ridden it, but at the center of those emotions is something found right in the coaster's name, happiness. From the otherworldly ambiance to the insane layout, I couldn't help coming off this ride entranced, spellbound, and above all else, happy. I thought Ride to Happiness was a super cheesy name when it was first announced, but it is the most accurate name they could have picked. Because at its heart, that's what it is, a ride that made me happy. Ride to Happiness reinvigorated my love for roller coasters and left me with a feeling I hadn't felt in years. It may be merely a twisted mess of steel, but in my eyes it demonstrates the impact something so simple yet so beautiful can have on us. The British kids had their quote unquote ride to happiness on Manta the other day, and I had mine in Japan, Belgium on March 3rd, 2023. So whether that's on an extreme spinner at Plopsaland or on some other coaster out there, I encourage you to find your ride to happiness, wherever that may be.